That sounds like a German Shepherd, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like a German Shepherd. I love their bark. They're beautiful. Yeah, Pete's in, he didn't bark at me, look. He barked at them too. That's a German, definite German Shepherd bark. I don't blame him having a good guard dog out here. So here we are. Once again. Our beautiful Holford, which we haven't been out here, well, since October the 7th. And I walked this way. Um, that was the end of... It was still autumn. It was um, still pretty and green and everything. Of course, you know what's going to happen to me now, everyone who follows me will know. Indigestion. And why are you going to get indigestion? I've got no hills to do at the moment. Not for about half an hour. Hour. What's, why is that? Why, what's going to happen? I've had two cheeses. <laughs> I've had a jelly though, that was lovely. I started doing that, you know, but bringing out a jelly in a little carton. Don't go off or anything, see? I mean, I would like to come for a small walk. I, I, I could manage smaller walks with other people. Then I wouldn't feel too bad because I wouldn't be able to keep up with them, see? Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? I never get over the green, you know. Never get over the green. Oh, hello, didn't see you. <laughs> I was looking the other way at the time. <laughs> hello. All right. All right, lovely day. Beautiful. I didn't see the dog, he just got past me. <laughs> This is a lot what I call a long stretch, this bit when you've uh, it's nice once you leave the once you leave the, the green and um, the roundhouse is of course uh, up here a bit and I can the stream you'll be able to hear the stream for ages. The fords as they call them further up. Imagine when I was small, walking along here, five years, five, say five years old, me walking past here. There was a long gap, by the way, when I didn't come here. When I first left Somerset on my life's adventures, um, I think I came back once with, with Zara as a baby. A friend of mine, he brought us out here. This aura had to be carried because she couldn't even walk. She was a, a, like one years old. She, she wasn't walking until she was um, 16 months or 15 months or something. We had to carry her. He carries her. Julian, his name was. So we came out here with Zara. I think we took Andrew with us. Yeah, we had Andrew as well, Margaret's son man now of course in his 50s and um, so I did used to remember the place so I came out there then what happened after that and then I think I brought my husband to be my husband out here with the kids a couple of times we or it might have been once, actually. Just to show him this place. Yeah, we all came out once here. There's the roundhouse. 
Looks like it's had a coat of paint. Might not have. It just looks whiter. Maybe they do that in the the summer. It normally has a yurt up in the field. Don't know if it's got one this year. I haven't gone down to the bridge. Down there's the bridge and the, you can see the the waterfall down through there, look. Yeah, it's a gorgeous walk. It can sometimes seem, when I can remember when I used to come home, back when I parked the van up especially, I would, this would be my last journey, you quite often this way, back to the car park where the van was. And it used to sometimes, you've been out for a massive hike all over the hills. Sometimes you could unwind coming back here and savour the, savour the place until you came another time. Other times you were so tired, you thought you were never going to get back. It would seem to go on and on and on, but most of the time, no. Um, I'll never ever stop loving this place. And even though I reflect the good and the bad when I'm here, it always heals me. And the fact that my sister's scattered up here somewhere, it helps really knowing she's everywhere. I don't have to go to a particular tree or anything. She's everywhere. I sometimes see her as a deer. I imagine her to be a deer. A female deer. Who's not going to be gunned down or ripped apart by hungry hounds. They still have hunts up here. And uh, I've seen the hunts. I've witnessed the master of the hunt passing me. They would have run me over if he could have. No, I'm joking. When they were looking for a load of deer once. And they do appear. I've been followed by a deer once, a female. This was ages ago, before Jude died, and it followed me for ages. It kept very still, then it would follow me. It was very interesting. And of course these old gnarled trees. I've been here since I was small and, f and before. Because my older sisters I think were familiar with coming here. I think so. We were a bit of a split family really. There was the pre-war children before my dad went off to the war. My, before my mum came to Somerset. They were evacuated. And then after the war, from 1947 onwards, my sister Margaret was born in 48, Jude in 49, and me in 52. So, but we were never all together for long. Barbara got married quite quickly. Um, my dad had left, he'd, um, for various reasons, when I was two, he went back to London. I think he missed London. He tried for a good five, six, seven years to cope with Somerset life, but I think he was a real Londoner. And he'd gone through the war, but so had my mum. And separated from her children, had to work in a bomb factory. Both had stories. Both had stories. Both had love stories, I believe. Interesting, isn't it? You could write a book about them. Like I said, this is a long walk. 
before we get and then once we're in the coom it goes very quickly sometimes this part of the walk seems to take much longer than when I'm in the coom I seem to whiz through the coom and it's gone this bit I remember because it does go on for, it does go on for quite a while before you you get in the coom although this is the coom this is the coom and it is great as well all of it I'm going to keep quiet for a little while so can hear the birds I'm going to turn off for a little while folks, I'll come back on once we're further in the coom. Here's the stream, some bluebells still. Over and out for a minute. Right folks, we've, we're leaving the Holford village area now, the big walk up, surrounded by beautiful trees and the music from the stream, the babbling brook, as quoted by William Wordsworth. We've all paddled through that bit in the past when we were kids sometimes it's deeper than other times and then um, I think a bit of my tooth has another another bit of my tooth has broken off causing a little bit of roughness uh, I thought I felt something grind a minute ago when I was eating my cheese <laughs> anyway not to worry I'm going to take a paracetamol in a minute because it's a bit bit rough I've got to sort my teeth out actually there's no NHS apparently so I've got to try and find a good private one that's not too dear even the MP Penrose has been mentioning my plight in Parliament apparently there we go what a beautiful spot isn't it Is it frozen? Yeah, I knew it would. Take it out. Take it out for a minute. Oh, I knew it would do it. Right, that's alright. Um, Kodak's having a funny turn. Um, won't switch off, just when I'm at an important bit, isn't it? So we've only got video, folks. It's done well, though. But it's uh, decided it wants a break. And it can go like this for an hour. We'll be out of here by then. But I've got to sit down. I'll fiddle around with the battery, blow on it, and things like that, and see if I, I can do something with it in a minute. Um... So meanwhile, we just I was I've given, I was having a rest anyway. I just got to go down here. I've got pictures and videos of Daisy and Amber paddling through there when they came out with me once. I don't know if we've got to do any stream hopping when we reach the fords a little bit further up. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go over here for a few minutes. Have a drink of water 
See if I can get the Kodak to come out of the sleep mode that it's got a habit of doing after it's been on for about four hours. It's sort right, of both batteries, both cameras' batteries packed up at the same time. Kodak's all right now. It's taking a few pictures and it's having a rest from the battery charger. Let's charge it up a bit. Uh, so I'll do a little bit more video. We've just had the paracetamol uh, for the tooth and help a bit. Yeah, so this is the start of the coom now and we'll have a couple of streams to get across. It's been recorded many, many times, don't forget. This is a well-worn track, this one. Um, at the moment, I'm making the most of being under the protection of the canopy of trees that's in the coom. Um, but there will be quite exposed moments once we leave this, we hit into Shepherd's Coom, heading for Bicknola. Look at the gorgeous green of this lovely oak, look. Apparently, I think it was Henry VIII ordered the planting of lots of oaks for his ships. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I just can't take enough photos of these beautiful trees. So I do try to take some as I'm going along, but the, with Kodak, if you leave the camera on too long, it, get, it doesn't like it, and it, it'll go to sleep. Look at those trees in there. And over there. Total, total beauty, everyone. Many people have sat on these logs and had picnics and rests, paddled their feet in the cool stream. And look at, just look at the the trees all greeting you as you come through saying hi Sheila nice to see you again at least they like me they welcome me here we're coming up to a section I always think of as Jude waiting sat on the bank up here waiting for me Look at this. Just look at it though, everyone, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's just unbelievable beauty, isn't it? There's somebody coming, I have to turn off, but like I said, I've got images of me. Um, by the bank up here, but there's somebody coming. I'll let them cross first. They're not close enough yet. I'll turn the video off in a minute. There. Look at that. A few people about now. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? The music of the streams. Right, over and out for a minute until these people go by. 